them to regular meetings quarterly. I think we do them the last Wednesday every three months. So this is the uh, regular meeting. Um, and so um, today uh, we only have one item on the agenda, which is to review the uh, draft evacuation guide before we start going out and having stakeholder meetings. So we'll get to that in one moment. Um, but we'll start with, again, calling the meeting to order at 10.06 a.m. Um, uh, and uh, we'll start by uh, asking for the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda with that item? I will, before I say that, we are going to pull the uh, minutes because we're going to bring those up the next meeting. So, um, so it'll be approving the agenda with the minutes pulled. I make a motion to approve. Thank you. Is, uh, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Chief McNeil. All right. Um, anybody opposed? No, so uh, the agenda is approved. Uh, so we'll go straight to public comments um, before uh, before we move to the action item. And so for public comments, uh, we do have some people on Zoom too, so I'm making sure I can see. But are there any public comments for the? I have one. Sure. Laura. Sure. Okay. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm Laura Ward of the Ohio Valley News. Um, I was reviewing the document plan draft this morning and I noticed that um, the Ohio Valley News is not listed among any of the communication sources um, for in, in case in times of emergency. Um, and I, I just hope that was, I don't know, some crazy oversight um, because the OI Valley News should be the top community partner in any communication for disaster emergency or any event that's going on. Um, if you're wondering why more people aren't engaged in this process, uh, on the city newsletter options, there is no box to check to get agendas for the fire council, for this uh, for this council's meeting. So there is a first level of communication problem that I'm noticing is that we're not getting emails from the PIO. Um, or, or seeing them come through the website. Um, the, local, the local press, um, the OBN is the only local source with dedicated boots on the ground during emergency um, disseminating information. After the Thomas fire, the county, who I noticed was listed first on your communication sheet, was criticized by the state for the way it got its information out. Um, so they uh, have, don't have a best track record and um, we'd like to help there. Um, after, so the OVN during Thomas Fire uh, was quote, reported at the CNPA, California Publisher Newspaper Association, um, that the OI oh, Valley News, I didn't work there at that time. Um, they had three and a half million social media views of their content during the fire. Um, during the first three months of COVID, when I did work for the newspaper, uh, our web traffic tripled to over 60,000 per month, and our Facebook engagements were 58,000 per week. So people, as soon as, you know, an emergency, they are turning to the news. Um, so what we do in emergency, what the OHA News does, is a little bit different um, than what we could have done in the Thomas fire, actually, because we relaunched a new website. Um, aside from the, what we did before was 24 hour coverage, which we do. Perry Van out and moved in to the newsroom and, um, or he was out, like Tim was in the newsroom, Perry was out in the field, he was in, um, you know, situations where he's out there talking to people who are being evacuated, talking to officials, um, boots on the ground all the time. During COVID, as when, as Thomas, all that content is free. We do not have a paywall up for emergency communication um, with the public or, or health emergency as well. Um, we have equipped all our reporters and people who are on the front lines with um, masks with respirators, you know, higher level respirator masks so that they can also stay safe. And we've attended trainings at the fire department down in, um, at the Camarillo location about what to have in the car, how to be ready under, um, emergency. We have a new, um, so, uh, we have a new digital news app that allows for push notifications. 
we are only at the beginning stage of getting that information out that we have an app that um, pushes out. If, if people choose breaking news alerts, they'll get a buzz on their phone when there's anything. So we want to partner with um, the city and um, uh, emergency response on that. Um, our reporters also now can upload stories from the field on their phones. Um, so we can get stories onto our website right in the field, right uh, at the time. We can interview officials that are in the field. Um, another thing is that our, our media is cloud based and it's not, will not be disrupted by Wi Fi outages. So, um, since we moved to the cloud, uh, it's been a year or so, um, we we do not need to be in our office. We do not have to have a command central that's in town. We could, you know, be in Ventura or wherever the, the Wi-Fi, you know, the one Starbucks that's left, um, we could be there. Um, also, um, uh, just that visitors, please keep in mind that visitors, people here visiting, do, do turn to media. It's the evidence is there that people jump on our site. They look OI News, even if they don't know it's called OI Valley News. They jump on our site. They're getting the content they need for free. And um, with our new website, I hope you'll check it out if you haven't lately, because it's a $20,000 site that we just launched um, a month and a half ago. And um, it's it's really a new world for digital um, media and art in our valley. So yeah, so we're going to be the ones who are the main source for communication and to, um, we think it's vital to partner with our city and our officials, our, our law enforcement and fire department um, to help you to get that information out. And um, it's, it's just, it's too important to, to miss. It's too important to, to miss on this. All right, thank you. And we'll we'll have that. Uh, I, I, I we'll bring that up as part of that item. So. And, and I kind of wanted to add uh, at that time we have the, the, the newspaper was in 24 7 for three days during the month of And we had streams and streams and streams of people coming in asking for real time information. Um, we took 100 calls that first morning in the office. Because uh, we still were lucky enough to have the ability to have phone calls. And we delivered hundreds of papers to people that weren't subscribers just so they could have constant contact. And it really appears to be, for most people, the communication of choice. The other thing is when I take a look at a couple of alternatives, and you guys are smart enough to figure it out, I'm not going to name them. Um, if you're not signed up, if you don't have a code, if you haven't been previously logged in, you're not going to get access. And so I would hate to refer somebody to somebody that has to be pre logged because that's such a tiny segment. So you know, take a look at those. I know that we're probably never in our lifetimes going to have loss of every avenue of communication in a single instance. So um, I know it'll be different. But uh, again, I think that uh, everybody should have access. And yesterday I came in to get my OI. And because I was interested in the swimming pool. And um, came in and we got a great code guy. Mm -hmm. And he helped me get through here. And he said they would send me a password. And I was in at 1030 and the password showed up at 4 o'clock. And so it was a five and a half hour time difference from the time they sent me the password till the time it showed up. We don't have that luxury in an emergency. Our app is free. I hope people will visit their their store, their app store, and download it. Very good. All right. And I see Jeff Starkweather has his hand up. So uh, if it's public comment, let's. Um, Jeff, can you can you hear us? We'll see if we can hear you. Hear you. Can you hear me? Able to can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, we went to a, um, we had these uh, climate um, meetings back before the pandemic at the local bar, and one of the presentations was about 
an alternative communication system they were talking about other cities had because when I read this section on wind power is out and you list a whole bunch of things, almost everybody lives on their cell phone today. So if you lose cell phone service, most of these communication vehicles would not be available. So I don't know what ever happened with that. And I don't even remember the details of exactly what the technology was going to be, but I remember that was being pushed for Ojai so that when we had a fire, a cell phone service was out, there was a way that people could communicate. So that's just a question. We'll get to that as part of the action item. Uh, we'll talk about that. So, um, so any other public comment at this point? I don't see any other comment. Um, before we get to the action item, I, uh, I think um, we do have a, a new uh, fire representative in the room. So let's go around the room and uh, introduce ourselves. Um, uh, I'll start and uh, we can work this way. Uh, I'm city manager of the city of Ohio, James Vega. I am uh, Captain Jose Rivera. I'm the Chief of Police here in the City of Ohio. I'm Kelly Executive Assistant at the Ohio Valley Fire State Council. Bob Assistant Manager at the I'm visiting the Ohio Valley News. Laura Ward, the publisher and the owner of the paper. Good morning. Barry Parker, Division Chief of County Fire, uh, Fire Chief of Ohio. Morning, uh, John McNeil, lifelong community member. Oh, Francis. <laughs> Alma, uh, public works director for the city. Uh, Mayor Betsy Sticks. <clears throat> Bill Byron, go ahead, city council. Bob Daddy, president. <laughs> All right. And so, um, <clears throat> Just to fill everybody in, oh, all right, all right, yeah, okay. Just fill everybody in. Um, so we've been involved, or we've started this process about a year ago where we uh, 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 had some discussions at city council meetings about the need to create um, some sort of public information tools to help the community be better prepared for evacuations and or disasters. And so um, we have done research, we have found um, some sample documents, one of the main sample documents was a Malibu um, guide that they had created for their community. Uh, we had noted that Malibu had, a, their guide noted a lot of the same issues that Ohio would face, uh, particularly a large uh, tourist community with uh, state highways that run through town and um, a lot of, um, uh, and then uh, only having kind of a few access points in and out, which is we're all kind of issues that Ohio deals with as well. And so we had um, found that guide and we had uh, agreed that we would create a similar guide uh, for the Ohio community that could be handed out to local businesses, handed out at hotels, handed out to residents, posted on all the websites, um, and uh, um, distributed to, to media partners and, and all of those things. And so um, we've been working to develop that um, uh, with a big thanks to Chief McNeil. I think uh, he, Robin, and I kind of took the first uh, couple of rounds of review. And then what we've done over the last couple of months since the last meeting was we sent that document to other key partners, um, uh, key, key public safety partners, I would say it was uh, phase one. We sent the document to PD, we sent it to fire, we sent it to the, the hospital, we sent it to the school district, we sent it to uh, the Humane Society. Uh, I think we got the ham radio operators too. Yeah, yeah. So, so we wanted to get kind of those key partners who, who uh, are involved and have the role during the evacuation and the disaster um, portion as far as like the, the ones actually implementing the items discussed in the in the document and so that um was important to us uh, we you know took some time because we kind of 
gave each person a couple weeks and then we get it back and we give the next person a couple weeks. But I think it was worthwhile. I think it got, um, we heard from a, several of the groups that they were uh, really excited about this, that they, um, you know, we, we just felt like we got the buy-in from these different partners that they were um, uh, owning this document as well, which I think is important. And so we're coming to the end of that phase and so one of the meetings here tonight is bringing, or one of the, the reasons we're meeting here today is we're bringing the document with those um, edits, so that, that feedback included. We want to get one more round with the disaster council and if, identify any needed um, edits, any improvements and modifications. And then the next phase uh, that we're preparing for is on August 10th at 2 p.m., I believe it is. Uh, we are having a um, stakeholder meeting that we're going to open to, uh, we're going to invite the key partners, but we're also just going to make that available for the public to, to view as well. Uh, August 10th at 2 p.m. at Kent Hall. And uh, that is going to be kind of a big um, stakeholder meeting. We, our intent, our plan right now is that we would give people a couple of weeks after that meeting to give any more feedback, anything that we may have missed, anything that the community might uh, say is important that we haven't identified yet. And then um, after that two weeks, uh, assuming no major changes, we'd be then bringing the plan to council, uh, probably at the first meeting in September. Uh, for the council to actually consider approving it, adopting it, which would then allow us to um, take the next step and we, we um, take the next step in distributing the document. Uh, we have a list of ways that we're going to do that, such as going out to local businesses, going to the hotels, dropping off printouts of the document, uh, making it available through uh, all the different web and social media presences. Uh, and doing some things like booths at Ojai Day and town hall meetings and things like that. So before we get into the report, I wanted to just give like the big picture kind of process, how we got here, where we're going next. And so, as I said, what we're hoping to get today is more feedback from the group. Uh, now that we have had the, the initial public safety partners uh, provide information on what uh, needs to be added, modified, removed, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, I'll speak to you since both public comments were about the, uh, the media or the um, uh, resources page. Uh, I, I think um, obviously open the hearing feedback on that too, but I think it would make sense to add uh, uh, a media partners uh, section where we can add the Ohio Valley News. Uh, the uh, current version, and, it probably reflects the fact that we were working with all the different county um, entities and and, uh, and everything. The, the current version just shows the government resources, but um, we can kind of expand it to, to show uh, non-government as well. So, but uh, with that, I think I'll open it up to uh, feedback or any recommendations or requests. Okay. Sure. Um, maybe we could go ahead and put earthquake instead of landslides. I think it's, it's quick, it's sudden, and that is the most. And um, I would kind of like to see whoever rewrites this. The biggest problem to be had for criticality or fire first, earthquake fire first. Well, it's going to take a few minutes. Generally, we're okay with that. Um, I believe that. After we had a little meeting just the other night, three quarters of Kent Hall was failing. Or in UCLA, Professor Falcon, about a four points that you will find it woefully inadequate. You will not be able to get anywhere near enough to put that this large. That's a few handles. Jeffrey put that thing on. Um, one of the things that I uh, was speaking to start late this morning is. In third grade, we would have a fire alarm and we would march out and we'd hold up everybody's shoulders and we'd walk down the hall. And I have yet to hear the two tone siren. And I've yet to hear any media on that or explanation or do any 
any accent on it when people hear that. I do not believe we're going to associate that with anything that's realistic or anything that we're doing in this room. They are not going to be able to brand that with this. And so what I think we need to do is we need to do some branding. We need to get that in the paper, get a picture, got a new two-tone siren. When you hear this, turn to AM 1610. Get 1610 to go live for a couple months. I don't care what day, Monday at noon, Tuesday at two, whatever you want to do. Just says, hey, this is the test. This is this day. Tell them what day it is. Tell them what time it is. Say that we're actually here. We're really, really uh, letting you know that this is a test. We want to make sure you check it out. And you know, you can contact and you can do this. Um, I, I think that needs to go on for several months. And I, I think the other thing that I'm not sure that we're doing is is Casitas and Caltrans going to roll out their electronic boards to supplement us when we have um, now. Casitas had that electronic board two years ago about conserved water. We had accidents there. We had congestion there. People would stop by and they would look at that thing and go slow. So we know that's effective. We know the count trends are effective. And they've got a couple of boards to supplement us. So I, I would hope that they know. And that's what CERT kind of did. We got a whole bunch of resources where people say, look, I'm going to bring my bulldozer out and make sure I clear the roads, that this is civilian. We're going around checking for the yellow cards in the windows during an earthquake to make sure that people are okay. Those are the okay signs we did. Um, I probably should let Laura do this, but maybe you guys can do it. Um, QR codes. We, we can have a simple poster that goes to every business, especially every place that has got resident visitors, overnighters, that have a QR code where they can just hit the QR code and go directly to the site and get the correct information. They don't have to program, they don't have to look at anything. Just go there. We have a lot of people that don't do well connecting different websites on their phone. It's going to be emergency, it's going to be hurry, and we have to make it easy. And that way, our QR code, you can have an entire disaster plan sitting there at the front desk. That's it for now. Thank you. I'll, uh, uh, respond kind of, uh, to a couple of these, uh, the QR codes, I, I think actually that makes sense to even include that on like the front page of our plan. So if people, when people find them, they can, uh, use the QR codes. Um, so regarding electronic boards, um, we actually, so yes, uh, we coordinate with Casitas and Caltrans and I think we are due, it's, it's on our list of doing kind of a yearly check in with them. So we'll do that soon and make sure that we uh, remain coordinated with them. And then also the city purchased a couple of new electronic boards. So we actually have more uh, boards uh, now than we've had. Uh, we put just like two in the last uh, six, six months or so. Um, so I think we have two boards and I think the sheriff has two boards. We've got two. Yeah. So, um, but, but, uh, even to a bigger picture, coordinating with Casitas and Caltrans is just uh, something we try to do regularly uh, because if there was a landslide or an earthquake, we're all going to be using each other's equipment. So, um, so that's a, a good point that we'll follow up on. Um, the evacuation sirens, I know um, the chief did a PR video, if I remember, uh, showing those sirens and what they sound like and what they mean, but I think. Um, it's probably been a year, so we can probably mm -hmm. start replaying that on our. Well, I think we do replay it on our TV. Sure, we'll replay it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you're up to doing something. Uh, and uh, when the, uh, you could replay it. He's on our app. So people have an experience. We also hearing. play it on AM 1610. If you yeah, that's right. Yeah, Lindsay Rivers is reporting on us today, and then that story we could have incorporated that video if you give us the link. Oh, definitely. Put it up right in our news story that's coming out. Yes, awesome. Um, and then James yes. um, just reminded me that we do, we actually started playing some of these 
uh, clips on our radio station as well to try to get people to, to listen to the radio station a little bit more with updated information. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, just a quick suggestion, and, mm -hmm. and I'll put it out there. Um, I know a lot of the uh, population here in Ohio are the older generation, and they're not too savvy with their phones. Would it be uh, just a suggestion, maybe having an event, or maybe maybe even at the farmers market? Uh, once a week, just having a booth set up. So if somebody wants their phone set up or help with their phone to, to get all these apps uh, on their phone and, and set up, uh, maybe you could have that there and they can, they can get some assistance with that. Yeah, we, we've done that at some of the Ojai Day, Town Hall, mm -hmm. the, some of the festivals. We made a joke about it last time. The problem we had, uh, we had a lot of people interested, but when you go to download it, you have to remember your password. So we had so many people say, I don't remember the password. And I'll, I'll, I'll remember to do it later. I don't remember all my passwords, but I keep them on my phone. And I know where to go. Exactly. There's no so, password on our app. Okay, so um, and so that's something we'll we'll keep looking for opportunities to do too. So I have a group of teenagers who do perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> phone help. I can jump into the QR code too. That's one of our um, distribution plan for the guide was to um, a large marketing campaign that had a QR code that went to the guy. And now, should a disaster strike, we use QR codes is that we can change that QR code online in our evergreen document to direct right to a website that has you know, the latest disaster information. So it can be the same code that you use somewhere different. So we can switch that out. Well, then we're happy to run that too. Yeah, we'll have to talk to you guys. A lot of them will react to us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're happy to um, I just want to mention that you know, during the time, uh, I pretty much lived on DC Emergency and I could get connected to it. Mm -hmm. And it was a really great resource just because it, was, it, it felt like the most real time information to me uh, that I could find. And it was super useful. So I don't know how we can make sure that people know that that is the first place that information is going to be posted. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I also think that. I think the Ohio Valley News is, is an interesting publication for people that are in Ohio, but maybe people in outlying areas or other people that 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 you know happen to subscribe to other news sources. It seems like we should list the Ventura County Star, Los Angeles Times, New York Times. They're all coming into Ohio and focus on issues that are that are local, you know. So we actually do countywide reporting. You should check out our website. Yeah. So I think um James got a question. Oh. Yeah, sure. Hi, I just wanted to um, make you guys aware that the Fire Safe Council is starting implementation stages of two grant projects. Um, we have about $800,000 in grant money to roll out a fine scale risk mapping project and a wildfire evacuation and vulnerability assessment. The fine scale risk mapping is going to create a suit of data layers, um, which include mitigation layers, um, hazard and risk layers, as well as ember zone cast, ember cast zone layers, and vegetation coverage, which the Ventura County Fire um, Protection District will provide us. Um, and one of the deliverables of that is an interactive digital dashboard, which will be public and private, a mix of public and private. So that will be down the line and something to put on the information resource maybe. And um, on top of that, the wildfire evacuation um, assessment, uh, wildfire evacuation vulnerability assessment is also going to be included in that data layer um, so that we can make sure we are reaching um, those people who are hard to reach. Um, and then we also are rolling out our Ojai Valley Community Wildfire Protection Plan update which one of those deliverables is to create a designated web portal and that web portal will be to disseminate information to the public as well so just want you guys to keep that in mind Thank you. Yep. one of the things that uh, robert and i talked about being important with this document is keeping it um updated yeah and we we're calling it kind of a live document where as new things come out like the uh, fire city council digital dashboard you can just add that right into our uh, 
or and with short run printing, that makes it so easy. We can have a Lewis and Meat book that we can update the hard but we can also print, you know, 25 30 copies of our clients so that we're not stuck with old versions floating around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more of a comment than anything else, but it's yeah. it, it speaks to the living document uh, that you just that you just answered. And I think if we can get that message out that this is just the start of you know you know many changes to come. The challenges are there is so many ways to get the message out, right? And we're, we're adding even more uh, to uh, ways of doing it compared to what's already on here. And so the challenge for this group is to figure out what makes sense and how do we find that balance between the redundancies and messaging but not over uh, overloading the, the audience. So huge challenge. And again, it's just a comment. It's a comment that everyone's aware of. Um, but to your point on on the uh, see alert and the, the county site, really all the messaging is going to come from the anyways because the messaging during the university has to come from the public officials. You can't you can't recreate or make something up. If it's not an official uh, message or information coming from the professionals, it, it shouldn't be put out there anyway. So. Uh, I, I agree that county site is very intuitive. It's gotten even better since the Thomas. I think it got kicked off during the Thomas uh, fire. And so, anyway, just want to make that, that comment. It is a living document, and this may look completely different in another year from now yeah. or two years from now after we exercise it. And it does need to get exercised. I think that will even bet out more of where it should be. And I think real quick, and I'll, I'll go to the sticks and I'm oh, aware, but let me add real quick, because um, you made a, the um, comment about, you know, the challenge being uh, keeping this usable and readable, basically, and I, I know we said this before, but since we've been people, we have a 600 page emergency handbook, and so this is not intended to be the 600 page emergency handbook. We don't think anybody but five of us will ever read this. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, for us, just kind of as the big picture goes, it's like we were trying to create something usable, readable for people. Hey, I heard there's a fire coming. I'm in Ohio. I wonder what we're supposed to do if the fire, you know, is, is coming in this direction. Or, hey, uh, the ground just jolted. Let me read the emergency guide because maybe that's, you know, a uh, a uh, uh, precursor to an earthquake. So uh, trying to do that. And also if the earthquake does happen and it's not, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, off the scales earthquake, uh, still hopefully there's power and they can pull the document off and say, make sure I, I know what to do. Um, but a big part of it is reading this and getting familiar with it beforehand too, because because of things like the uh, just start weather, Bob said, of, um, power being knocked out and things like that, um, that our goal is that people actually, when we hand these out at events, when we um, take them to people, that they actually read it and get familiar with what to do beforehand. So, uh, well, I just want to say a huge thank you and congratulations. And, you know, we said that it couldn't be done, so thank you so much, Sean, for coming on at this stage. Uh, thank you, Chi. Thank you, James, Robin, Omar, uh, um, because um, we're doing it. So thank, thank you. you. And, and also just the process of getting all the, the key stakeholders in, you know, fire, EV hospital, school, the main site, the hand radio, and giving them the time and opportunity to bring in it's you know, a really great example of collaboration. So I'm really grateful to everyone involved. Thank you. Very eager and antsy, but I think it was important to include our work more than include yes. everything. It's an exciting day. Uh, <laughs> uh, Customer member wire. Yeah, I take your point about the official messages have to come. Messaging has to come from official sources. But that does not negate neglecting. That doesn't mean that you neglect the ways of disseminating through community partners that are not governmental. And I, you know, I think that like in the very in the introduction <clears throat> where it just talks about local county and state agencies, we ought to include common community partners. Uh, because we know that the reach is uh, going to be vastly more efficient if we use community partners that are prearranged rather than just sort of oh you know let's let's go, you know let's call them out you know if we have if we have prearranged uh, structural uh, situations and not just the Ohio Valley News but you know that's what an important partner but uh, you know there are individuals that might want to partner that have hundreds of emails um you know ready to go our, our text network so if they would agree maybe to a protocol 
for uh, accepting official messaging to help it help get it out. I think I don't see any reason why we wouldn't want to do that. Um, and, and that's where I think that including in the introduction about community partners would be very important. So anyway, and, and I wasn't suggesting that we, yeah. we, we eliminate any of those the messaging uh, resources. It's just keep in mind that it, it should start from the officials and that's, uh, that's I agree. and filter down. And I, I see it as this gets mm -hmm. pushed out and people go, well, I'm really comfortable with the White Valley News app. I'm going to keep that one because that will eventually get the message, right? It's going to have to filter to all of these resources. And so the more we put out there within reason, the audience can now pick and choose what they're most comfortable right. with, but eventually that message will get to all of those. And we can actually have protocols of reach it with community partners, you know, in terms of expanding that reach, you know, I think. Uh, I want to make another comment that since, uh, on the introduction, and I just want to get it on the table. I've been very consistent in expressing this concern. I'm going to express it again. The most dangerous thing, especially in a fire, is to clog the roads. And so it's not appropriate to imply the first thing to do is to try to drive out of the valley necessarily. And I think this document by, by you know, should the need arise to evacuate the city right at the very beginning, uh, talking about uh, uh, shelters as temporary without support, I think that it's uh, what we have learned from experience around this state is that it's not appropriate necessarily to try to get everybody out of the valley as a first priority. That's not to say the same. And I think this document has a bit of that prejudice built into it that I think we don't want, if this is communicating to the public, we really need to think through how to manage the public's movements in the face of an evacuation and do not want to stimulate or, or, or put in place a get on the roads first mentality. Um, I think it's a, it, there's a difference between get out now versus management of that evacuation. It's critically important. Again, I'll repeat myself. The most dangerous thing is to clog the roads out of the, you know, where there's a response from the public out of the control of the yeah. sheriff's department. Yeah. And it happens so quickly. And I, I, I'm a little worried about that this is a, a, a public communication document. We really need to think through that, how to manage that situation. Yeah, I, I agree with you on, on that uh, because it's really important, uh, depending on where the fire is at or whatever the disaster may be. Uh, we don't need to evacuate the entire city. We may have to evacuate a certain area of the valley right. uh, that's being affected. And, um, you know, we can get those folks so out. We have the mentality of here's where to go first. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then the sheriff's department can say that we're going to we're going to manage you out, you know, yeah. but not get hit the road first. No, no. I mean, and, and, and I think that's important, the information that we do put out to all the different uh, uh, sites, all the media, and everything uh, on what the plan is. We're evacuating this area here. Right. Everybody else just needs to prepare in, in case. Or go to a place, another place first. Correct. Yeah. Correct. A okay. staging area. Jane, so. feel like I know. Apparently. I just wanted to add that the interactive digital dashboard that will come out of the fine scale risk mapping will try to um, have live updates on these data layers Good. so that. It can be prioritized what areas should evacuate first. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we can collaborate down the line. Definitely. Just in that intro, maybe we need to emphasize that people should follow the orders of, yes. of the sheriff. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, if you need to leave. So like, Absolutely. we can make that adjustment yeah. pretty easily right. to, to change their feelings. Yeah. 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 But that's just yeah. Yeah. Notified that there was an right. actual. Yeah. But that's just my concern is I think the whole, a lot of the tenure of this is evacuation first mentality from the whole city mm -hmm. is not necessarily the safest thing to do. I mean, yeah. it's good to hear that input. And then, because there's been reluctance to put this together from public safety when I was in various positions, mm -hmm. because we didn't want to have a script to where we have people planning to go right when we really want them to go left. Exactly. So, and now that you're saying that, we're, we're kind of scripting it that way, which we were trying to avoid in the beginning. So, <laughs> I think we can adjust it. 
you know why that is? It's probably because this started as an evacuation right. and it yeah. turned into more of an disaster for the yeah. But an evacuation yeah. can include parts of the valley first. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean necessarily just leave everybody leave the valley right away. I mean, exactly. the worst disasters we've had, I think, have been road grade loss and fire. So we'll adjust that language. Mm -hmm. and see what we can get. Uh, this is Chris Dan. Yes, yes. Uh, official. When you said official communications, we really have a lot of problems with official communications. Um, and Bill and I were talking early in the morning, and I said I'm going as a state farm rep to Faria, and Bill said, "No, you can't go because Stanley's closed." And I said, "How do you know that?" I mean, that said, back in the day, we he got said that. it's on television. And, and so I, I'm reading breaking news today about the war in the Ukraine that I read a week ago on a different <laughs> site. And so I think it's imperative that we put, I don't know how you get to deep sea, but at least to KBYT and some of the other people. And you have a different thing, Laura, where you could just send Perry out there like we did at the school board meeting. You could stand there with this camera and he can stand there and he can broadcast it live Everything has to have a time stamp. Everybody needs to know how long ago this news came out. Is this a four hour communication old? Is it from you know X amount of time this morning? Because that's really important. People are gonna look at that and they don't want to jump if they say this was this was filmed at 7 a.m. or it's it's two. <laughs> right. Our site says how many hours on this No, I like it. Yeah. Great topic for a conversation when it comes to communicating. We all digest our information differently. But if it's two o'clock in the morning in the valley, the length of walk for three days, people wake up smelling smoke. The adrenaline goes up, the anxiety and the panic. But if they subscribe to VC Alerts, their phone's gonna buzz and they're gonna open their phone. It's gonna be the first message there. If you live in this area, there's a wildfire coming, you need to. You know, number one, number two, or number three. If you live in this area, your options are four, five, and six. That gets people prepared. So when the information flows, it's got to be quick nowadays. Social media is incredibly fast. So it's like this raging river, and it, it moves really fast. Well, Facebook is kind of like you're on a canoe, you're just cruising through. Um, but when there's a disaster that's happening immediately, we have to get the information out. It has to be timely. Everyone needs to be informed so they know what to do. So that's where that VC alert comes in first. We get the message because we want you to get the message. We want KBY. We get the message. We want every media outlet to get the message to start spreading the word. But it has to be correct. So if you get the message two hours later, it's usually yes. incorrect by that. So, but with BC Alerts, we are pumping that information directly from the command post where you have your fire and your law representative. We're cooperating and coordinating together to get the appropriate information out to the public. Well, thank you, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a of questions. And we yeah. need to get a door in a last fire. We did wake up the door in the morning. The wind was blowing like, you know, I never spoke in numbers. Mm -hmm. it, it, almost, it almost feels like we could have a, a separate meeting with just the, the, the messaging of this. all of these resources and figure out a way. Because let's just say for discussion, it comes from BC uh, or BCMRC.com is going to be the, the trigger for all the messaging. How do all the how do all the rest of these resources get that same instant message and then and rebroadcast it in there? Um, in there, right? Get everyone together at the table, all these members. I think the messaging is the messaging not only in preparation of, but the, during the disaster itself is key to the whole success of this. Right? So I mean, it almost feels like it needs a separate meeting. Yeah. As this, uh, we monitor disaster and sheriff and police radio 24 7 right now, all the time. So we've got our VC alert, we have that, we can um, carry has connections to the town commanders. Like, yep. we know all the sources to get information, and we're in the business of doing it and monitoring it every day. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I think maybe maybe it's not. Maybe it doesn't need a meeting. But maybe I'm happy to meet with everyone who's part of it. Well, I think it's always good to get you know the like um, like resources together that are going to be uh, have a certain role in a, in a 
disaster like the media and the PIO staff from the agencies. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, hey, the media takes the face, it's so much better. And so the next time you see it at two in the morning, oh, hey, how are the kids doing? You know, you know, yeah. So, uh, anyway, just a thought. Yeah. That's something, you know, last year we did um, the first ever emergency preparation day citywide, and we, we had uh, all the agencies come speak at Libby Park. Um, and we did it kind of quick and, and um, kind of put it together pretty simple, but maybe that could be the, I think that could be something we can do is maybe the second version of that, um, and it can be done kind of in parallel with, uh, with this document. I think that's one thing I, I think, like you, uh, Chief McNeil said, trying to condense this into 10 pages, but it's like, that's not the whole conversation. There's, there's still, we still have to have like separate conversations about how we can improve our media, um, you know, um, our, our, our uh, communication uh, 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 disbursement and how we can uh, improve being prepared with Casitas and Caltrans and, you know, all those things. So, um, so all that could still be done while we're moving forward with, with the um, evacuation guide. Um, I wanted to speak real quick to um, Jeff Starkweather's uh, comment about um, tools when, think, when technology fails. And um, I think, uh, I know he mentioned that we had talked about a new uh, tool we had, and I think it was the app. And I think it was the, the app has the function that we've used a couple of times now where we can send out an emergency alert, um, the, uh, the My Ohio app. But uh, I wanted to point out in the plan, we mentioned a lesson we learned during the Thomas fire, which was um, we did not, when technology failed, we didn't have non-technology options ready to go. And so we focused on trying to get some non-technology options ready. We ordered signs that say tune to six, emergency tune to 1610. So we have, um, I think four of those over in the public work shard. And then the thing that I did not know about when Thomas Fire hit, and I learned because I heard from about 100 different people that we used to do it and we should do it again, is the, um, is the large wooden boards that people can post notices to at key spots like bonds. And uh, so that's also included in the plan uh, as a, we put a little section for when the power is out. So that was intended to speak to some of the issues that I think uh, Jeff Starkweather raised. What about the idea of having transistor radios and transistor radios mm -hmm. for all, everyone? Yeah, that's, uh, so we looked into um, an idea we had last year during emergency preparedness day was just to order like, you know, we have 7,000 residents. So, you know, we were, our idea was to order a couple thousand radios basically. And we looked and you can find them, well, so we found them for two or three dollars each. Mm -hmm. So we were thinking about trying to like, go out to the community, maybe get a couple of donations and like just order radios for everybody. Um, the, uh, we ordered one and it didn't work very well. So we held off on it at that point, but we can do some more research on that as we be part of the next emergency day. Um, the one comment I was going to add is that with the, um, I think at that point it was gonna take six weeks to order them. And I think when we looked at it about three months ago, it was like a year to order them because of the delays and. No uh, chip pandemic, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's something on that is on our list, and it, it's reflected in the plan. By we included AM radio 1610, but we didn't, okay. you know, explain uh, how people would access that. So. When is the next emergency? Uh, so we haven't said it yet. So, yeah, but it, it, kind of hearing what I'm hearing, it sounds and like with AM 1610, mm -hmm. just about everybody's car will work all the time. Yeah. Yes, except uh, next. You and, I have talked, you and I have talked about that before, so I've actually been paying attention. A lot of brand new cars aren't including AM anymore. Oh, no, electric cars, not electric cars, mm -hmm. not AM. Yeah. yeah. AM will not work electric Yeah. So, so that's going to be one thing we'll have to figure out. Um, just to, in terms of the spirit of what you're talking about and what the mayor was talking about, this whole section on when the power is out, mm -hmm. um, you know, it seems to me that. Since we're this is trying to communicate to the public and where to go, what to look for. Yeah. We ought to maybe even have include a map that shows where to expect when the power is out, you will where the portable e-message trailers will be, yeah, where the information stations will be, so you know where to look. And they obviously should be on the major arteries. Yeah. All right. And it, it would it might help, you know, for yeah. people to know what 
where to go to look for it. And in that same spirit, I, I, I got to say, I'm a little taken aback by having like Topa Topa School and Matilla Junior High School there, which, well, only the back of Matilla High is actually on an artery. Mm -hmm. We don't have Nordoff there, which is on the 33. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a, a you know, a, a shelter rather than a, a, than a, a safe refuge, it, you know, why isn't Nordoff on that list of where we might expect the messaging board. Yeah, we should call that off. I think it was intended to be included in that evacuation refuge yeah. site, but we should call that. But we'll I'm just thinking like a, a visual mm -hmm. thing that someone can reference as to where to expect when the power is out messaging mm -hmm. stations to be. And I guess it goes without saying that every portable e-message trailer is going to have backup power itself. The ones either the new solar are our uh, generator. The new ones we've ordered, yeah. and I think the ones the sheriff have our solar, you know, the solar battery. So, we charge, we have, so the ones that we have, they have internal batteries in them. Right, that, that need to that be recharged. Charged, and then they also have a solar panel that will keep them going for They'll long. keep them going along. Yeah. Okay. okay. With that. And then a capability of maybe if worse comes to worse, if, you know, we get clouds, mm -hmm. that we uh, we be able to move a generator from, you know, be able to recharge the yeah. portable generator if need be. Yeah. We have had any portable stations where people can charge their cell phones when we're out of power. That was a big problem we had when we were out for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. People couldn't recharge their phone. They weren't getting DC alerts. They had no landline, no cable, they had zero. You mean to do something that with our microgrid here? Um, or we could set up a place for, I don't know. If I, yeah, it not. could be something like Kent Hall. Well, Kent Hall's not on the microgrid, so we have to. We, but that's in progress, so yeah. that's just something we can design. Yeah. I was actually thinking for the emergency case, you could add a solar powered charger for phone or other things. Actually, so Chris has had his hand up on here. I don't know what else to say if he's had his hand up for a while. Chris, uh, and then we'll go to Chris. Um, uh, Chris, did you want to say something here? And, if you can speak loudly, we're on one. We're all sharing one laptop. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, James. Uh, just in re uh, further response to what Bill was saying uh, regarding, you know, we don't want to imply that the, the first and best option is to, is to get out of town uh, in an evacuation scenario. And uh, obviously, re you know, responding to official uh, messaging is, is critical. But our the, the, the evacuation assessment that uh, the, uh, Callie has referred to that we're just launching now, finally getting the funding from CAL FIRE six months later. Um, we will include transportation, uh, fire behavior, and human behavior modeling. Uh, and that's gonna help identify the best TRAs that we can maintain, uh, the best CDEX, uh, you know, uh, and, and hopefully inform uh, a more nuanced evacuation plan and mind you, this is being developed in, in partnership with the county fire, OES, sheriffs. Uh, and so they'll be all part of the technical advisory group that will govern those projects. So uh, hopefully we'll have information that can be incorporated in this plan at, the, at a later date uh, that can uh, help uh, better inform our options that, that can be communicated. Thank you. Uh, our office that the audio is very poor on this meeting and that Perry is not able to hear what we're saying. Okay. Um, I'll ask James if you can try to see if there's any way to improve that as we go. Yeah. I think that's the microphone. Um, Tom? So uh, I'll try to talk to the microphone. <laughs> um, I have a question just for, for uh, the fire department first responder and, and our official first responder. Um, would it be agreed upon that by you guys that if most communication systems fail, we have you know, technological failure, that the two most important things are AM radio and Predetermined as coming from the wire described, predetermined locations and signed work. I guess I don't know sure if you're out and telling people like, like broadcasting, I guess, with the PA system. Correct. That, that, that was the story. Right. Uh, I'll jump in a little bit. Yeah, go for it. <clears throat> I think there's a, there's, a, there's a couple points to a very good question. Number one is 
The first thing is we have to be prepared because we don't know how it's going to go down. None of us do. If it does happen, no electricity, no Wi-Fi, you have a quarter tank of fuel, you have no extra batteries, you have no extra food, and you've got no direction on where to go. All the roads are broken, sheriff can't get in, fire department is just trying to rescue people out of buildings, you are on your own. <coughs> There's a realization that we all need to understand is that perhaps for that first six hours, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. I know that's hard to swallow, and that, that we do have to assume a lot of accountability. Each of us assumes a lot of accountability if the signs aren't there and if the radio is down. So by what is being put together is giving people an opportunity to be successful by what you're saying here. If you do, if you do these preparatory things, it's going to help you to be successful. On your own. On your own for the first few hours, perhaps. It could extend multiple hours yeah. until we can get the infrastructure put back together until we can get the messaging out. Yeah. I think to, to your question, you know, this guide speaks to, um, you know, kind of a, a sliding scale of messaging capability, if that makes sense. So yeah, we have power, we have Wi-Fi, we have everything. Well, this is the way the guide's gonna go. You hit these uh, resources and you'll get good information. But you have to build into any emergency plan, you know, redundancies all the way down to old fashioned sirens like the, you know, because uh, water has the dam failure siren system. Like, uh, they're probably designed back in the 1900. I have no idea, right? So, but it's still in play today because if everything else fails, that's the only option they have to alert people down downstream. So, yeah, I think there is a place for sign sandwich boards. I think there is a place for AM radio with you know battery backup or, or power backup systems. So yes to all of that. Uh, will it be effective? Uh, to, to be determined. It's its effectiveness is based on can people connect to it? Can people drive or get to those signs to read them? And can they tune into AM radio to hear the message? That's that's the key. And I've already mentioned that a bulk of this effort, not only designing the guide. But it's getting the, the word out and, and, and exercising it. And having diversification, I think, is one of the key things because uh, I think most people don't know during the Thomas fire, radio antenna burned down. You know, and so it was right. first, 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 first. So, so yeah, the cell tower burned down. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, yeah, that's you. So, so, line where, yeah, so. So, you know, um, you don't put all your eggs in one basket because the radio is probably most likely it's always going to work. Like in almost, almost, almost every emergency, but in that emergency, it didn't. So I think that's part of where we're trying to show people there's all these different options, know what they are, know where they are. So I think the map is a really good idea. And then, you know, when it happens, look for these things. Yeah. I'll jump in on the map because we are in the process of having a simple map created. So we're not using any of those GIS maps are kind of hard to read. Mm -hmm. And it will be a blank map. So as something occurs, we'll be able to replace those, those things on as a second layer on the map. Okay. We don't really know what they're going to be in every situation. And um, I just want to add on the sandwich boards. Um, we had a, an EOS training on if all the power goes out. And they presented sandwich boards as the most important way to communicate, which <laughs> we kind of laughed at. But they said, well, if everything goes, it's done with the sandwich board. So yeah. we're going to take it seriously. <laughs> Is there a list of the places that the sandwich boards would be at? Would it be like at evacuation centers or? Clearly, all the evacuation centers and at all the stops. But that's why we're working with the school districts right now to see like where can we put the boards and we want to kind of look at the map. And again, that's going to depend in part on what's going on. Yeah. Because, you know, all volunteer our office. Okay. <laughs> but there, <laughs> those are available. But there are suggested uh, locations right here on the page. Okay. Right okay. Now, yeah. at the bottom for multiple bullet points are, are potential locations. Yeah, and then the, regardless the, of the power outages, there are vulnerable and AFN populations that, you know, for whatever reason, can't even make it to a sandwich board. Yeah. And so um, I think adding a collaborator like Help of Ojai to get to these hard to access populations is a good idea because they're very connected to them. Um, yeah. And that's a great idea. I'm going to chime in one more time. I'll be quiet. But um, when we're talking about our stakeholder engagement, first level is called public safety folks. Most of you are here. The second level is our community stakeholders, what we're calling our trusted messengers. 
And those are the folks like the Ohio Valley New, they might be um, folks like Help of LFI, but the ones that are really going to take that messaging and get it out to the specific audiences. So know that that level of outreach is coming and it's going to be more direct than one on one. And do absolutely, but and it might even be some individuals who really have connections around town. So well, um, to add to that, yes. <clears throat> The last time we had a good sort of meeting, they went ahead and had um, neighborhood captains, had individual people that were willing to go door to door and knock on the door to make sure they gave the individual message. I think maybe we need to reach out to them and make sure they reconstitute and see if we can't have people. And you have people like Trevor Corp with 7,000 Instagram followers that can get out. And I would hope that we would have all these great ideas ready for Ohio Day. Just a fire in place, having a booth, and Ohio down the road, and some other community things, and the Humane Society about where to take your pets and have your inoculation and you know help and everybody else putting on apps and really make this an Ohio Day community effort. Yeah. Rather than just uh, Come to a parade and drink some beer. <laughs> I know I'm late to this, um, so I'm new to this document as well. Um, I'm not seeing any locations that are Miramonte South or Oakview. Is it just a city thing? So it doesn't include. Okay. Maybe yeah, so they don't have control state. over Miramonte or Oakview. So right. Just... I mean, so they don't get a sandwich board. So I guess we'll be. But I don't think so. Maybe you want to put some language on there. People can go with information. Yeah. But it, in the reality is, the day of the emergency, the county's going to be working with the city. So the city's right. going to say, hey, we're putting out our sandwich boards. Guys, okay, yeah, we should probably, you know, let, let people in uh, minor zones, south, no upper Ohio residents know. Because the city can only has so much uh, jurisdiction to manage. Well, Brian's already here at the table this morning. Yeah, and I, um, yes. Who works for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I have a question. I'm going to turn to James. Uh, in light of what I just heard about electric cars not having AM, <laughs> uh, I believe there's a provision in the, uh, the FCC uh, does a permissive licensing for low watt FM networks now. I, FM broadcast, you know, uh, it doesn't require a full broadcast license for low, low watt type of community oriented FM stations. I was wondering if we ought to look into having a low watt uh, uh, FM license along with the AM license that we could simulcast across both AM and AM and FM. That's something we can I, I, I'm, at, I'm turning to James about that. I do remember reading about that. Yeah, I have not read anything I can look into. Okay. That there's some kind of rule that came out a few years ago. I'm sure we could get that allows a community uh, service type low watt FM uh, licenses. We could look into Maybe that. Maybe uh, we'll look into it. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing too where if, if we get new tools like that, because it's a live document, we're, we'll be able to just add that in right, right into the document. So, um, I do see one hand up on the uh, computer, Jeff Starkweather. Jeff, if you can speak uh, up, because um, it's a little hard to hear in here. So. Nobody can hear me. Hello. Jeff, can you hear us? You can't hear me apparently. I'm not muted. Well, anyway, I can't figure out why. What I'm hearing from you, the thing you James, is, is that this is a living document, right? And so I just, uh, what comes to mind for me that's the most important thing of, of all is that this actually be finished and useful before rather than after the next disaster. So I hope that everyone can come together around and make it happen. And then, of course, committing to making it better after it happens. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect, right? Right, but it sure would be great to have it rather than not have it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's the thing for us, like we said, uh, where we'll do small print runs at first, we'll take them to places like um, the different hotels in town and the different local businesses. And it's just people who have no idea, at least they're going to have, you know, they'll be able to wrap their hands around it. So is there a, is there a target date that we all want to commit to? You know, so we can actually have a commitment from everyone like, hey, this is going to happen at this time. And if we have things that we want to add on later, that's great. But yeah. we're going to do this. So our target date uh, is get the feedback, but the also the uh, direction to move forward today for the stakeholder meeting, August 10th. And then uh, to bring a final version, doing those two things to bring a final version to the council at the first meeting of September. So if we have consensus today that <coughs> the year is going to move forward, that's the plan. So, yeah. I'm ready to join that consensus. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I, you know, we're going to take feedback from stakeholders on August 10th. So in the meantime, too, if anybody reads it and sees anything, um, we're going to just keep compiling all the feedback. So, um, so uh, this discussion was good, but if you get home and you think of something, shoot Robin and I an email and, and we'll uh, work with Chief McNeil and we'll, we'll update the document. So um, if there's nothing else, the, like I said, the action we're requesting today is that the uh, disaster council uh, uh, give us feedback and then uh, uh, I'll, Authorize us to move forward with the stakeholder meeting on August 10th. I have any comments on it, but I can talk about it. Sure. I'll make a motion to move forward. All right. Thank you. So we have a motion. Is there a second to move forward to the uh, stakeholder meeting? Thank you. And then uh, uh, anybody opposed? Let's go that way. So I hear not. All right. So we'll move forward. We'll have the stakeholder meeting August 10th. And um, again, any feedback between now and then, or even after then, send it and we'll keep updating. So, um, and that's the only item on the agenda. So, with that, we'll let everybody go um, or we'll adjourn at uh, 11 13 uh, a.m. So, thank you.